Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 11 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about using stored procedures with SQL Data Source Control. In my SQL Server database, I have two tables. On the left hand side, you can see TBL department table, which has got department ID and department name. And on the right hand side, you can see TBL employee table, which has got employee ID, their name, and the department to which they belong. Obviously, department ID is a foreign key. So, for example, if I ask you to which department does Pam belong, her department ID is 3, meaning she belonged to payroll department. Okay, so now I want to design in a web form where I want to have a drop down list and a grid view control on that web form. And then within the drop down list, we want to display, you know, all the departments. So whatever departments that we have in departments table, we want to retrieve them and then display them in this drop down list. And when I select a department from the drop down list, for example, at the moment we have payroll selected. Now, at that point, I want to go to employees table and retrieve all the employees who belong to payroll department and then display them in this grid view control. So obviously, I want to do this using stored procedures with SQL data source control. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio and then look at this. I have these two tables already created, TBL department and TBL employee and the SQL script to create those tables and populate it with some sample data. You know, I'll have this uh, script available on my blog so you can copy it from there just in case if you want to practice. All right. Now, I, I want to achieve this using stored procedure. So obviously, I need a stored procedure which gets me you know all the department IDs and names so I have the stored procedure SP get departments and if you look at the query it's very straightforward select department ID name from TBL department okay so obviously let's quickly test this so execute so I get department ID and name and then we want another stored procedure where I want to retrieve employees by department ID so if you remember, when I change my selection in the drop down list, we will pass the department ID you know, to a stored procedure, and that stored procedure should return all the employees belonging to that department. So that is this stored procedure which is going to retrieve data for us. So SP get employees by department ID. And if you look at this stored procedure, it's taking in a department ID parameter. And then obviously, since we want a department name in the grid view control, we want to join a TBL employee with the TBL department table. And the common column between these two tables is department ID in TBL employee table and department ID in TBL department table. So based on that column, we are joining TBL employee with TBL department. And what columns are we retrieving? Employee ID, name column from TBL employee, and you know, name column from TBL department. Again, you know, if you're new to creating stored procedures and joins, I strongly recommend to watch SQL Server video series that I have, you know, already recorded. All right, now let's flip to Visual Studio. So first we want, you know, a drop down list, you know, showing all the departments. So obviously uh, to serve data to this drop down list, we need a SQL data source control. So let's drag and drop a SQL data source control onto the web form, which will help us retrieve the data. So SQL data source control, uh, click on the smart tag button and click on configure data source. So select your connection string from web.config file. You know, this connection string is already defined in web.config file. Click next. And here, look at this, configure the select statement on the screen. Instead of saying, you know, uh, selecting from the table, you have another radio button here. Specify a custom SQL statement or stored procedure. Select that option and then click next. On this screen, you can specify either a custom SQL statement that you want. You can write it here or you can use stored procedure. Okay. Now, whatever stored procedures that I have in my sample database, okay, will be listed in this drop down list. And if you remember, we have this SP get department stored procedure. Okay, so I select that, click next. We can test our query. Look at that, I have my department ID and department name. And finally, click finish. So we are done configuring SQL data source control. Now, we want to display the department ID and department name in the drop down list. Now, remember, first let's drag and drop the drop down list control onto the web form. Now, 
again click on the smart tag button of the drop down list and look at this choose data source so for this drop down list where is the data going to come from from sql data source one control so i select that and then look at this as soon as i select my sql you know data source for the drop down list there are two more things that i need to select you know the display value for the drop down list and the value you know itself so what is a drop down list it's a collection of list item objects and list item object has got two properties the text and value so what's the display uh, the text that you want to display in the drop down list and what is the value for that list item object so i want to display the name of the department and the value is going to be the department id okay so click okay and that's it so now if we run this, this drop down list should actually show all the departments from TBL departments table. So it's still taking time to render the page. So now when I drop it down, we can see all the departments there. So the next thing is basically, you know, we want another SQL data source control, which calls this stored procedure sp get employees by department id so if i pass let's say for example department id 3 which is payroll i should get all the employees belonging to that department so as soon as the selection in this drop down list changes you know we should be able to call that stored procedure and then retrieve the data i mean meaning employees belonging to that department okay so let's go ahead drag and drop a sql data source control onto the web form and let's configure this now okay so let's select our connection string so these steps are going to be similar now I want to specify a custom statement or stored procedure click next and specify your stored procedure now which is that stored procedure SP get employees by department ID so I select the stored procedure and I click next now look at this this wizard is actually intelligent so it has detected that that stored procedure has got a parameter department ID so we need to supply a value for this parameter otherwise you know this stored procedure cannot be executed right because if I don't pass that parameter and if I try to execute that we get an error you know function or procedure expects a parameter for which we we haven't supplied a value okay so for this parameter where is the value going to come from it's going to come from this drop down list and what is a drop down list it's a control and if you remember a web page you know can get it para can it can get values for its parameters you know from these different sources i can get you know from a cookie if i want you know from a query string or a, or a posted form value or a session variable you know from these different sources but at the moment we are going to get the parameter value from the drop down list so i'm going to choose control here and then which control you have to specify the control id in this case it's going to be drop down list 1 that's it we are done so if you look at this the department id should be equal to whatever is selected within the drop down list and i click next i will have an option to test my query here and look at this depart you know the stored procedure expects a parameter so for example if i pass uh, four for example department id and i click ok i get the employees belonging to that department all right click finish and we are done so now let's actually drag and drop a grid view control onto the web form and then just to make it look you know better we can select you know one of the existing schemes let me shall select brown sugar click ok so we are done now we need to associate this grid view control with this sql data source control and select sql data source 2 okay so we have employee id employee name and department name columns that's it let's go ahead and run this now and as soon as the web form renders uh, the default selection is going to be IT department so the all the employees belonging to IT department will be displayed there okay and as soon as I change my selection you know the employees belonging to that department should be shown in the grid view control but it's not why because we haven't set the auto post back property of the drop down list control to true so let's go ahead and do that right click on the drop down list go to properties and set auto post back property to true so that the web form will be posted back to the server as soon as the selection in the drop down list changes so let's go ahead and run this once again 
and when the web form loads the default selection is IT so all the IT um, employees belonging to IT department are shown now if I change the department to administration so employees belonging to administration team are shown okay pretty simple and straightforward so here uh, you know this drop down list is using this SQL data source control and the grid view control is using this SQL data source control you know and both of these are actually calling stored procedures this SQL data source control calls a stored procedure which doesn't take any parameters but whereas this stored procedure I mean this SQL data source control calls a stored procedure that takes a parameter and the value for that parameter is coming from another control on this web page which is this drop down list all right on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.